Hi there, and welcome back to another episode of Sit and Spin with me, your host, Joe Royland. We're going to be talking more vinyl this week. As such, I'm kind of pimping my friend Scott. He show writes his vinyl, my good friend Scott Oliver. But uh, today on the show, we're going to be talking about the recent vinyl reissues of one of my favorite bands, the Goo Goo Dolls. We last talked about the group early summer last year in um, 2016, episode 112, when the band had just released their most recent album, Boxes. They're currently out on tour now on the Long Way Home Summer Tour, and uh, since they're going to be rolling through town here next week, I thought it would be fine, and they just reissued these albums recently, I thought it would be a good time to talk about these records. Uh, Reader's Digest version of the group, if you're unfamiliar with them. Uh, they were formed in Buffalo, New York in 1986 by vocalist guitarist Johnny Resnick, vocalist bassist Robbie Takak, and original drummer George Tatuska, who was around until... Uh, early 1995 when he was replaced by Mike Malinan, who was with the group from then until 2013. And now the group is pretty much John and Robbie and the dudes they have playing with them. Uh, the group's early sound reflected their punk and metal influences uh, when they're still very young cats and are a world away from the sound the band currently find themselves in. Today we're going to be talking about those early records and recent reissues, particularly their first four albums. And they were initially released as part of this fine box set, Pickpockets, Petty Thieves, Tiny Victories, The Goo Goo Dolls, 1987-1995. This was issued as a limited edition box set back in April as part of Record Store Day. And you're saying, well, just probably you didn't talk about it then. Well, the reason I didn't talk about it then was because I pretty much knew that in about four to six months they would all come out individually which sure enough they have now the box set aside from including the first four albums also has the fifth album a copy of the Goo Goo Dolls A Boy Named Goo now this record had already been previously issued separately back in 2015 as part of the 20th anniversary celebration of this record and about a month before that the band had also issued their 1998 album, Dizzy Up the Girl, but the others still remained unavailable. And when these two came out on vinyl, I was kind of hoping that there were going to be more albums reissued on vinyl. And sure enough, the band have finally do that, done that. Now let's get around to talking about each one of those albums. Uh, first off, we have the band's debut album, Goo Goo Dolls, was first issued in 1987, three years ago. And it's the first time in 30 years that the album has been available on vinyl. Originally it was, came out on the Mercenary Records label, and a year later was picked up by, for greater distribution by the, the label Celluloid Records, and it would later again be released in 1994 on Metal Blade, which was the band, the, the label the band found themselves on, with a slightly different cover, and you can see they put this little first release on the cover. But um, it's a very different band that you find on this album. It's a very young band. This record was uh, recorded and produced by the Goo Goo Dolls themselves in three days on a budget of only $750. Uh, with the band being uh, inebriated and on other substances a lot of time it was recorded. Robbie Takak sings all the lead vocals on these songs. John still hadn't gotten up the nerve to sing the lead vocals yet. Uh, and most of the songs, barring two of them, are only less than three minutes long. There's a couple of interesting covers, which would be a trend over the next few albums for the Goo Goo Dolls. In Cream Sunshine of Your Love and Blue Oyster Cults Don't Fear the Reaper, which they pretty much just pummel their way through. And the first time I actually remember hearing about the Goo Goo Dolls was at the record store I worked in at the time. We got in a uh, compilation sampler tape, which I'm pretty sure was Celluloid or it may have been through Mercenary, I can't quite remember. And there was a couple of tracks from the Goo Goo Dolls on that album, and first I remember thinking, hey, any of the band named the Goo Goo Dolls, and who also further have a song called Don't Beat My Ass with a Baseball Bat, have got to be pretty cool. There's obviously a bit of a Ramones influence going on there, which there was. So uh, I checked them out, I really dug them, got the record from back then, and um, been a fan pretty much ever since. Um, but that was the first album, Goo Goo Dolls, 19... 87. Two years later, the band would follow it up with their sophomore effort, Jed, which found them now on the Deaf Enigma label. Um, later, it would also be reissued again in 1994 by Metal Blade. And this is the first time this record has ever been available on vinyl. 
It's also the first album that features Johnny Resnick singing lead vocals on two of the songs, Up Yours and James Dean. But the majority of the songs are still sung by Robbie, except for one song, a cover of Creedence Clearwater Revival's Down on the Corner, which features fellow Buffalo hometown hero Lance Diamond, or the incredible Lance Diamond, as he would uh, be also known, who would also turn up on the group's next album. We'll get to that in a moment. And as following the trend, there's also another cover on the album. This time, the group's uh, cover of the Rolling Stones' Gimme Shelter. And speaking of Lance Diamond, there was a compilation album, I believe it was reissued in 1993, called No Alternative, which also featured the Goo Goo Dolls with Lance Diamond doing a cover of the Rolling Stones' Bitch. Um, but anyways, back to this album. Uh, the record was produced in conjunction with the Goo Goo Dolls and Armand John Petri, and definitely shows a growth stylistically in songwriting and the performance ability of the band, probably due in larger part to a bigger recording budget, but uh, especially on tracks like No Way Out, uh, Last Month, Had Enough, and James Dean previously mentioned, which kind of an acoustic track and definitely shows, you know, kind of the early talent of the songwriter of Johnny Resnick and kind of where the band was like kind of mined some gold down the road. Uh, there's also some fun stuff with like the first record, uh, the song called Sex Magnet, Maggot, not Magnet, uh, which is kind of funny because early name for the band before they became the Google Dolls was Sex Maggots. Uh, and the album was called Jed after Robbie's college art teacher, Jed Jackson, who also painted the album's cover that you see here, which is called Arkansas, because that's where Jed Jackson was from. The band took barely any time at all following up that release with their third album, Hold Me Up, which again found them on yet another record label. This came out in 1990, just a year after Jed was released. Uh, this marks the first time that the album has been domestically available on vinyl. 1990, 89, 90 was kind of the cutoff point for US record companies producing vinyl. They pretty much gave up on the format to focus on CDs. So as such, there were a lot of records that were pressed overseas in Europe, but never released here in the States. So this is the first time ever in the US that this album has been available on vinyl. This record found them now on their new label of Metal Blade. Metal Blade at the time had, was a major label, had a distribution deal with Warner Brothers Records, which kind of gave them a leg up. And again, it was produced by Armand John Petri, and again, once again, also showed with a newer label, newer budget, bigger budget, showed an even greater increase in the production and the sound of the band, their performances, their songwriting, once again, got up a little bit further. This album also had the vocals pretty evenly split between John and Robbie, doing about half the songs each on the album, and once again, guest appearance by Lance Diamond, this time on the cover of Prince's I Could Never Take the Place of Your Man, and again, the ob obligatory second cover on the album, this time was a really good one, the Plimsolls, uh, a Million Miles Away, almost as good a cover as the Plimsolls original, which is saying something, because that's one of my favorite power pop songs of all time. Otherwise, the original material on this album, is, uh, as I said, was much stronger. It provided the band's first single and video in the song, There You Are, and other notable cuts like Laughing, uh, Just The Way You Are, Hey, and the last track on the album, which was an acoustic song recorded actually live outside of the studio, a track called Two Days in February, with again, it's kind of a precursor to a sound the band would kind of have a hit with later with songs like Name. But, this is also the group's last kind of punk, garagey sounding album, and for a lot of early fans of the band, this is where the party stops for them. This is like the last album they really like for them, because after this they kind of consider them sellouts. To me, if gaining more popularity because sex is your goal, that's not selling out, that's achieving your goal. But. That's something else, but it would take the group three long years to release their next album, and four, Superstar Car Wash. Now, along with Hold Me Up, this was the record I was most excited about getting on vinyl because it's never been on vinyl before, and this is my favorite album by the band. Um, when it came out in 1993, it came along at the perfect time for me. Um, absolutely fell in love with it from the first listen and played it like daily for the rest of that year. It was the group's first album on Warner Brothers Prime. Warner Brothers had picked up their option on the band from Metal Blade, although it was still issued in conjunction with Metal Blade. Uh, there's a whole story with how badly um, Metal Blade screwed them over in contract as far as royalties and stuff. I'm not going to get into that, but just kind of a little hint of that later. If you've ever seen the 
VH1's behind the music on the Goo Goo Dolls. You can probably look it up online. You can get the whole goose on that. But um, as such, being that it was their first album on a major, major label, uh, the band, the label and the band really wanted to kind of push that and get more attention to the band out there. And they enlisted a top-notch producer in Galvin McKillop, who would like find success down the road with uh, Toad the Wet Sprocket along with all the other bands. And really up the Andy once again in the production and the songwriting. In an effort to get their name more out there, they even enlisted the replacements, uh, band idol Paul Westerberg, to co-write the album's first single, We Are the Normal, which is a great tune up. It's kind of sort of a ballad. It's one of the songs that kind of sort of starts off acoustic and mellow, but then we kick in. It goes back and forth between the two. And it still emphasizes the band's punk and metal influences. In fact, this is the album we're listening to right now. Especially on songs like Cause You're Gone, which we just heard, which uh, part of the riff of which resembles Judas Priest's You've Got Another Thing Coming. Uh, the Pile Driving Domino, which is sung by Robbie. String of Lies, which is one of my favorites because the vocals are split between Robbie and John. Uh, Stop the World, So Far Away, all great songs, love them all. Yet there's a more polished commercial sheen to them. And, other, and again, other than that, the album's other songs, tracks like uh, Falling Down, which we already heard, and Another Second Time Around, kind of emphasize uh, the, the um, indie rock that was going on at the time the groups like the Posies and Matthew Sweet power pop bands like that were having some success with breaking through more into the mainstream a little bit more so the, the uh, Jim Blossoms would later in that year and into the next year uh, featuring kind of like barring jangly elements and catchy hooks from power pop music and uh, it would also kind of go on to inspire kind of punk pop that would show up on the band's next release and the and next two releases and then kind of influence a wave of bands that would follow them. It's kind of the bridge album between their early sound and what they would sound like after that. And uh, it's probably kind of why I like it the most out of all of them. But these songs are just so ingrained in me and that's probably why it's just my favorite. Like. To me, like the promise that was showed on this record was delivered on this record. To me personally, other fans might not see it way, that way, but me, I do. Uh, it also very much showed the burgeoning talents of John Resnick as a songwriter, a uh, great songwriter that he became. You really get a lot of the first, first great hints of that on this album. And um, so now, these four albums, you can pull out and get them all. They're all available out on vinyl, as are the band's other two classic records and I'm hoping the rest will finally get reissued on vinyl too I'd really love to have Gutterflower on vinyl uh, Let Love In would be great too but so far the only other two records that are out are Boxes which is um, their most re recent album and I'm pretty sure Magnetic got a uh, vinyl release too but I'd also love to have a vinyl release of uh, Something for the Rest of Us which is another of my favorite albums for the band um, the uh, one thing else I wanted to mention too was that um Hold Me Up and Superstar Car Wash also have nice little inserts that kind of resemble the inner CD artwork. You see these like long haired punks here. They still were then. And uh, Hold Me Up also has one too, but the first two albums are kind of bare bones. They don't have anything. Uh, but the latter albums also have the separate albums on uh, inserts in them as well. But very psyched that these are finally out on vinyl. Go pick them up now if you're a good Dolls fan. And uh, if you, especially if you missed out on the. Uh, box set when that came out back on record store day um, I got this actually was gifted this uh, by my friend Chris Brown thanks thanks again Chris I really appreciated that um, so it was nice to have that um, but that's the show for this week and we will catch you next time on sit and spin a uh, week after there might be a, like a delay or two in the week after the show because I'm gonna be at the Nashville Rock and Pod Expo on August uh, 26th down in Nashville, uh, a lot of great guests, a lot of fellow podcasters that I've been highlighting their shows for the last couple of years. Uh, the Hustle from John Laramo, Rock and a Roll from Brian J, BJ Cram, um, Pods and Sods Network, and Craig Smith and Eric Miller, um, as well as uh, guys from Pop Pop Culture Club, uh, Zilch and Monkeys Podcast, Cheap Talk with Trick Chad. And uh, a ton of other great podcasters. Oh, Decibel Geek. Jeez, how can I fit? Chris Inzak uh, and Eric Camaro. See the guys that are putting this thing on. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting all these guys in person finally. 
as well as all the other great guests that are going to be there. I've been posting links to that event that's coming up. If maybe you'll get a chance to go there, that'd be awesome. It'd be sweet to see so many people there. Uh, but I will be at that show. I'm going to be kind of doing a show on that show, documenting it, uh, hopefully getting some interviews with some of the other podcasters and stuff too. So that's going to take up some time in the following couple of weeks. So there may be a delay or a show, a week where we don't have a show right away. But um, until then, we will catch you next time on Sit and Spin. Take it easy.